Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to Shadowrun Hong Kong. Um, didn't think we'd be back here so soon, but the good folks at Harebrain Schemes have come out with the bonus campaign that they promised in their initial Kickstarter, Shadows of Hong Kong. Set in the weeks following the events of the main campaign, Shadows of Hong Kong will give you and your team the opportunity to turn the tables on the corporate police force that once hunted you. Through layers of corporate greed and urban strife, you will contend with dangerous enemies, uncover a deadly conspiracy, and cement your reputation as a prime runner, assuming you survive, of course. So, really looking forward to diving back into this and kind of getting a little bit more closure with the characters. Now, in order to play this, you need an import of a final save game from the main campaign, so you have to play through the original Shadowrun Hong Kong first. And your current global difficulty is set at normal. As There we go. Import save. And we spent 214 there is good old Sean. And it's, uh, look at our choices here. Basically gives you a sum up of everything you did in the main game. Cool. Well, let's go ahead and select this and see what happens. Are we getting another cinema? No. Rude Awakening. Something is wrong. The last thing that you remember, it was the night of the Kowloon City Riots. You and your team were running an errand for Kindly Chang, recovering an object before the inevitable police response turned the city upside down. Everything was going well. You had the item in hand, and then... Nothing. The world went black. A sudden explosion of pain behind your eyes jolts you back to the present. A nightmare succession of dream Im images flicker through your consciousness like a strobe light. A man with a pockmarked face. Slim fingers playing over the surface of your brain, leaving a slug's trail of agony in their wake. A second figure whose face you couldn't see, digging with relish through the scraps of memory that your tormentor left behind. It was a rough night. And now as your eyes snap open and adjust to the light, you find yourself in a reality that is a little more comforting. So things are already coming up Millhouse. Hopefully um, the rest of the crew is alright. Oh, never mind. A single bulb hangs from a corrugated steel roof. The dim light that it casts is barely enough to illuminate the table in front of you. Your head throbs in time with your heartbeat, and each pulse gives rise to a low, grinding, stomach-churning discomfort. Heavy weights on your wrists tell you that you've been handcuffed. Try to clear my head. You squeeze your eyes shut and count to ten. The pain in your head slowly dissipates, and your vision gradually swims back into focus. There's a rag on your lap, an old dishcloth matted with congealed blood. The dull ache that radiates from the bridge of your nose up and into your sinuses tells you where it came from. Hmm. Well, let's examine our surroundings here. The room is dark. Far too dark for you to make out its dimensions. All that you can see with any clarity are your own lap and the table in front of you. Uh, let's try and focus through the pain here. Squinting, you try to focus on the hazy objects in the distance. A searing jolt of pain is your reward. When the pain comes, with the pain comes a dream image, branded into your memory with crystal clarity. The first of your tormentors, the man with the pockmarked face. For a few torturous seconds, the image swims through your head, wriggling like an eel. Then, as suddenly as it came, the pain dissipates, fading away until it's swallowed by the relentless ache that throbs between your temples. The pockmarked man looked kind of like an Asian version of Edward James Olmos. In the distance, you can hear the pop hiss of a pneumatic door unlatching and sliding open. An enormous figure steps into the room, and the door slides shut behind him. Ooh, that's another big troll. You can just barely make out the silhouette of the troll standing across the table from you. Your other senses work to fill in the blanks. He's got a heavy build. The floor creaks every time he shifts his weight. The rustle of fabric over hard, sharp carrots and tells you that he has prominent dermal deposits. He's also wearing way too much cologne. From the chest up, the darkness swallows him, and you can't see his face. Let's stay silent for right now. The room remains silent as he busies himself arranging objects on the table in front of him. A notepad, a mug of soy calf, an old ballpoint pen, and an audio recorder. Finally, he looks up from the objects and focuses on you. 
Good morning, Mr. Sean. The words roll in his throat like rocks in a tumbler. How are you feeling today? Did you sleep well? Hmm. Nod at the bloody dish rag. Aside from the fact that I spent the night bleeding into a dirty towel, I'm great. Oh, poor baby. And I thought that you shadow runners were supposed to be tough. If it's any consolation, the nosebleed was expected. It's a common side effect of magical interrogation. You had your people poke around in my head, didn't you? They did something to me while I was unconscious. Yeah, that's right. Our mage probed your mind while you slept. He lifts the mug out of the light and towards his lips. You hear a long, loud slurp as he sucks the steaming fluid down. Don't know the man myself, but I'm given to understand that he's good. Uses a light touch. Hmm. Not he. Them. Two of your people went to work on my head last night. He pauses a moment, considering, then shrugs. Uh, afraid you're wrong about that. There couldn't have been anyone else. Hmm. Your pal with the skin condition didn't mess up my nose. It was the other one. The second mage. I couldn't see a face. He shrugs. It must be a figment of your imagination. It happens sometimes. The brain invents details to try and make sense of what's happening to it. Give it a few days, and the confusion should fade away. You'll see. I know what happened in my own head. We don't even have two mages on site, Sean. There's no way that you two you got scanned twice, so this guy knows my name. He shrugs his broad shoulders. But hey, believe what you want. Don't let it distract you, though. We've got work to do. Now, let's get to it, shall we? He shuffles his papers, flips open the notebook on the table with the tip of his pen. Run me through what happened last night. Hmm... What was the point of the mind probe if you're going to interrogate me anyway? Magic is great for pulling facts from a person's memory. It isn't so good at contextualizing them. What we got from you was a jumble of disorganized information. I like to take a lot of guesswork. It take a lot of guesswork on our part to piece those facts together into a coherent narrative. You cooperate with us, tell us the story as you remember it, and you can spare us some of that work. That'll be good for you in the long term. If you lie to me, though, well. Just don't. I'll know it. Now, if you please, tell me what happened last night. Just start at the beginning and take me through it until the moment that we picked you up. Oh. Oh, that's true. Not until I know what happened to the rest of my team. We've got them. They're fine. You can see them after you've told us what we want to know. Hmm. I'll help you if you give me the name of the mage with the pockmarked face. Fair's fair, right? I'm, we're not really in any uh, position to negotiate, but... There's a long pause. The guy's name is Wallace Koo, but like I said, I've never met him in person. They only bring him on site when there's astral work that needs doing. If you were thinking of getting payback, you shouldn't get your hopes up. Now, let's begin, shall we? He turns on the audio recorder with an audible click. Now we already know what your team we already know that your team went to combat Pangs, the biker bar. That your boss, Kindly Chang, sent you out there to conduct a shakedown of some kind. Hmm. The owner of the bar had something that didn't belong to him. Auntie Chang sent us to get it back. Right. The artifact. He glances at the notebook on the table. It says here that it was a jade I guess Kong. From the Langzhou period, dated back to 3000 BC or thereabouts. Hmm. Sounds about right. And again, we wouldn't even been there if Pang hadn't stole it. He nods. Not the smartest of moves on Pang's part. There aren't a lot of fences who can move a thing like that. We've got it locked up for safe keeping. Ke safe keeping, by the way. It's in good hands with us. Now you said we earlier. That was you and. His voice trails off. Oh, that's interesting. Um, let's go ahead and go with Gobbit 
because Gobbit's the shaman. Oh, I don't know. Iso, never know when you'll need a Decker. I'll say that I was with Iso. I assume that we'll have uh, med packs. Iso Bell, never know when you'll need a Decker. The Dwarf Girl, quiet little thing. He jots down a note on his pad. Okay, and who else? And now we'll say Gobbit with, was, uh, was with us. The Rat Girl with the Big Mouth, right. Another scribbled note. Alright, got it. And who was the last member of your team? Eh, I'll say we have Duncan along. The ex-cop. Nothing I hate more than a good guy gone bad. The pencil dances over a pad a final time, then stops. Your interrogator glances up at you. Alright, so Chang sent a group of you to combat Pangs to recover a very old rock. And she sent you on the eve of one of the bloodiest riots in Kowloon City's history. Funny timing, don't you think? Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Kindly Chang has a flair for the dramatic, but for the most part, the riot worked in our favor. Flashback time. I like this, the interrogation and just going back and forth between uh, what Sean remembers. The distant sounds of urban chaos rang in your ears as you led your team through a series of constrictive back alleys. It was hot out, sweltering, and the humidity left your body drenched. Bad night for a riot, but it made for good cover. You've been making good time since you left Hoi, and Combat Pangs was only a few blocks away. We're getting close. Her nostrils flared as she sniffed the air. Smell that? Garlic? Onion? Sizzling oil? I'm thinking chicken wings. How you're getting any of that over the smoke and tear gas is beyond me. You're right about one thing, though. We're getting close. And that means we need to keep our guard up. He's right. Game face is on, everyone. Duncan gave you a nod of acknowledgement, then turned to face the others. Be ready to defend yourselves. I've heard stories about the Go Gangs that Peng runs. The 888s, the Black Sun Boys, the Grinders. Packs of animals in leather jackets, all of them. And they like to let their knives do the talking. Chicken wings, gun show. Focus. The guy that Pang has worked the grill is supposed to be like some kind of kitchen wizard. He caramelizes the wings and fish sauce. Oh, that's what the guy at the bus, bus stop told me. I mean, how amazing is that? Hmm. Uh, we get the rock first. If any of the kitchen staff are still alive when we're finished, then maybe we can eat. Your priorities are alien to me, but whatever. We'll figure it out when we get there. Deal. Let's get moving. Well, go ahead. Lead the way. Oh, it's like riding a bike. I like the, the smoke is interesting, too. And looks like things are happening over here. Come on, man. Hurry up. Two figures in dirty riding leathers stood facing the shop window. The patches sewn in the backs of their jackets called them as members of the Black Sun Boys. Small time outfit, one of a dozen in the neighborhood who all operated under the supervision of Eddie Combat Peng. The window was unbroken, but not from their lack of trying. You could see half a dozen indentations in the transplast, as if they spent as if many shell casings on the ground, or as and as many spent shell casing, casings. The troll was working on an access panel, trying to brute force his way through the shop security system. His human companion rocked on his heels, practically salivating over whatever was locked inside. Must be the last unsmashed window on this block. Quite a prize for a looter with ambition. Duncan smirked at the two and shook his head. If the owner of that shop invested in transplast windows, the building's probably alarmed. Might even have automated defenses. Pop turret or two, say. Hmm. Okay. Well, if these two trip a building alarm, that could bring a security team right to this spot. Riots or no riots. Bingo. He examined them, frowning. These idiots look like they've been out here for a while. They might be able to tell us about the police presence up ahead. We can get them to talk to us. Otherwise, I suggest, I suggest just leaving them be. Your call, one way or the other. Well, let's go ahead and approach him. The human ganger turned on his heels, spinning to face you. An exaggerated, frantic motion. He's probably riding a cram high. He snarled at you through a mouthful of crooked teeth. Oh, 
Hey strangers, this is our alley, Black Sun Boys Turf, not a place for tourists. You scout your narrow, uh, blah, 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 blah. I lost my place. Okay, you scout your, or scoot your narrow asses back out of this block and out of our sight, or I'll make you sorry you were ever born. Well, good thing I have strength of seven here. Shut up and do what I tell you, or I'm gonna fold you in half. The human wind was white as a sheet, the blood draining from his cheeks. Looked like he recognized the name. I, uh, we're not afraid of you. I mean, why do you even care if we rob this store? What are you even doing here? Hmm. You aren't very bright, are you? I told you to shut your- or actually, let's raise your fist. That'd be the, the zen troll thing to do. His eyes went wide and he raised his hands in surrender. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. We don't want any trouble with you. Just uh, tell me how we make this right, okay? Tell me what I can do. Tell me about the cops. You seen any patrols in this area? Or are they sticking to their barricades? Oh, they're out there. Real trigger happy, too. They're doing a whole lot of shooting and ain't asking too many questions. You'll find a pack of them just around the corner, led by one of these special duty creeps. He nods his head eagerly. There now. We good? And if me and Needlenose keep doing our thing, will you leave us in peace? We, we don't want trouble with no Shadow Runner. Hmm. You and your friend pack up and leave, and we'll forget that you were ever here. His face went hard, his fearful expression wiped away by a wave of pure contempt, but he didn't have the guts to challenge you. He turned to the troll at the panel and snarled out a few words, and the two stalked off down the alleyway. See you guys. Well, that's good, because now we know that they're not going to uh, summon any kind of alarms or anything. Give me one sec, guys. Alright, well, unfortunately, it doesn't look like we can do anything there, so... I was wondering if we could actually just hack into the place. Using um, ISO, who hasn't said anything during this. And we got some dead bodies everywhere. The bodies had been reduced to a bloody ruin. Their mouths were frozen open in expressions of silent terror. Your team gathered to examine the remains. These people were shot in the back. I don't see any weapons on them either. Somebody gunned them down while they were trying to run away. Hmm. Bad night to go wandering. Speaking of which... Right, let's go to Pang's. We don't want to stay out here any longer than we have to. Indeed. It is a foggy morning now. We've got some dragon lines right there. Let's get a lay of the land. That is a big teddy bear. Let's head over here and see if there's anything. Uh oh, there is combat, apparently. Hi there, guy. Stay where you are! Oh, and we've got Hong Kong PD ready to go. Now, I wonder if we have our same gear. The HKPF patrol stared you down, their weapons held at the ready. In the center of the pack, a man in heavy tactical armor loomed over the others. The plates on his armor were emblazoned with the regalia of Hong Kong's elite special duties unit. One of the cops cupped his hands to his mouth and barked out a command. You! Hey you! Stop moving and put your hands in the air! Tough words, but he sounded nervous. Hmm. A couple of gangers are trying to rob a storefront around the corner, but I sent them running. You might be able to catch them if you hurry. The cop blinked confusedly, then half turned to the SDU officer at his side. Uh, sir? Should we pursue the- The SDU officer cut in, and the riot cop fell silent. His speech was slow and languid, and he sounded vaguely bored. Later, constable. If there are gangers out there, we'll catch them when we continue our sweep. We'll look at this man's clothes, his gear. These people are armed criminals and they're breaking curfew. You have your orders. I promise you, you don't want to do this. The big man growled into his throat mic, his amplified voice reverberating through the cla claustrophobic confines of the alleyway. Open fire! And here we go. So, let's see if I remember how to do this. Um, we are... We got Lightning Strike, Marshall... Yeah, we need to... Get all of our things here. Killing Hands and Stride. We need that as well. 
which increases our movement. And Mystic Armor. There we go. Got all of our defensive buffs. And our magic resistance is passive. And let's go with... Yeah, let's just rush up here and... Ah, that's the Sean I remember. Duncan, let's uh, take some... Do we have any full cover? Yes, we do have full cover up here. And who can we shoot? Let's go ahead and shoot Sean's target. There we go. And that's the Duncan, I remember. Now, ISO has a grenade launcher. Um, looks like we don't have a whole lot of full cover to really deal with. Oh wait, we got half cover right here. But she has a pistol, so we need to get a little bit closer for some work. And then good old Gobbit, well she is going to do what she normally does, she's going to hang back. And we've got Rat Totem, Acidic Fog, which we don't have anything. Let's go ahead and buff up Sean's aim. And now we'll see how the enemy reacts. Okay, they tried a uh, Molten Fist. Alright, these guys aren't hitting that hard. As I say, as I take a shotgun blast. Actually, that guy right there is probably going to be the... Yeah, the SDU captain. But in the meantime, let's go with... Lightning Strike? There we go. And... Celestial Manifest. Because it's against a mage. And let's try Rip Arm. Oh yeah, I forgot. He's a master at using his stunned attacks. I forgot that Sean was heavy CC based. So let's head up here now. And all these guys are undercover, unfortunately. Let's go with Burst Fire. Yeah, that was probably a bad call. Gobbit still has her grenade launcher, though. Let's see if this works. Hey, there we go. Can we do that again? Huzzah. That hit the captain as well. And we'll go ahead and reload. And we still have... Oh, we have channeled haste. Let's give that to our buddy. And we'll have... Well, there's no real cover, so I think Gobbit's just going to hang out right here. I don't want to use any of her fetishes or whatnot just yet. But I do want Sean to go up here and use his prosthetic hand against the captain. And stunned. Okay. Well, I don't know. Let's go ahead and rush up. Hopefully none of them have grenade launchers or anything like that. They're probably all going to be focused on the physical adept who's right here in the middle of them. Yes, indeed. And let's... Actually, I'm going to leave the SD captain to the rest of them. Let's try... Rip armor on this guard. Ack. Well, that wasn't the ideal thing to do. There! Oh, minus 6 AP. You are going nowhere. Alright, Duncan. Now you're in the primary spot to be. Mercy kill. We're not in that range yet. Now, ISO's pretty nasty with this from close range. Let's do steady shots. Well, alle allegedly. And I don't want to really mess with Acidic Fog, so we will heal Sean up of his last wound. And we'll flush target. And we'll go with an aimed shot. 
Every little bit helps, right? Now we should be good. Let's take this guard out. Yeah, oh, sniper. Okay, well, that explains that. Try and stun the sniper. There we go. That's what I needed to see. I wonder what we're going to do with any of the karma that we get in this game. Now, just keep on buffing these guys up until they're, like, ungodly. Can we mercy? Yes, we can mercy kill him. Oh, that didn't work out the way I wanted it to. Uh, stiff wind's gonna kill him though, so let's go with double shot. No, that's actually. How about here? And he dropped something nice. So let's move up. This battle's all but over. Get ISO in half cover. And Sean's good to go. Just punch, punch, punch. Cool deal. Alright, guys. Um, I'm not... A, well, let's see what he dropped. Cracked and bloody comlink. Without warning, the cracked and bloody comlink that you pulled off of the body of the SDU officer cackled to life. A second later, a cold voice poured through the device's speaker. Ch oh, I remember Chief Inspector Crate. Constables, this is Crate. That's her. The cop on the newscast when the APB on us went live. She set up the ambush that killed Carter and dragged up our lives. I want all units to move into position and sound off. You will then hold action until I say otherwise. We will put this riot down and restore this city to order. And this riot is responsible to police or er, is response to police brutality in Kowloon City, Sean. Something tells me that Crate's plan to restore order isn't gonna be gentle. We don't want to be out here when that call comes in. Hmm. Well let's keep moving then. We'll try and keep the distractions to a minimum. Good call. Even if we could handle whatever Crate is planning, kindly isn't paying us to kill cops. I mean, it's your call, but Pangs is right around the corner. I suggest that we just beeline it there. Alright guys, well we will see what happens with the gang and if we make a beeline to Pangs in the next episode. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the episode, go ahead and click like down below, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, that'd be a big help, and we'll see you next time. Later days, everyone.